Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you had a wonderful and warm uh, weekend. Look, we're first day of meteorological spring, so that's good. We've turned the corner on that. Looks like we've turned the corner on on um, COVID too, hopefully, and that means we've uh, turned the corner on marketing as well. So we will, in the, in the very near future, in the next, I think, two weeks from now, we'll be talking a little bit more about marketing and what's working, and it's surprising what's working now. So, uh, But prior to that, uh, we had Tom talk about um, his whole methodology of following up with people. He told me he had yet another person here last week. I talked to him on Monday, so about a week ago, and another person who was two, two years out. So he's had two people in the last month that were two years out that reached out to him with significant dollars that want to work with him, and that's, the, that's the, what the process can do. So Missy did a great job of integrating what uh, Tom was doing. And Tom, thank you very much for for um, helping us with this and sharing your ideas. So Missy and Tom have worked together and Missy's integrated all the follow-up Tom was doing with all of our tools into a point-by-point -point process, not just with the follow-up, but she's integrated it with the whole entire 5Q process. So now we have a step-by-step -step manual on what you do from point one to the, to the point forever as long as they remain a client. So Missy, can you kind of walk through everybody what you've done here? Yeah, yeah. So underneath the getting started in the toolbox, um, we now have a communication and office workflow guide. And what we did was we basically took all of the pieces um, from the epidemic marketing, from the kind of office flow guide that we had from before, and we wrapped them all together. Um, and Mike, if you want, just want to advance through on that Back. slide, I think there's uh, okay. one and go one more. There we go. Um, we have put it all together here in a um, one manual that kind of walks you through, like Mike said, step by step. So you can see that it, it takes through the whole entire appointment process, each kind of prep, the actual meeting, what happens exactly after the meeting, uh, what happens if they miss the appointment, and then continuing on to prepare for the disclosure meeting, and then what you do at the disclosure meeting. So we've taken each one of those pieces and kind of swooshed it all together into this particular manual. Um, we've given you all sorts of different um, uh, scripts or little email texts, um, all of the templates. You can see on, on the second page here of the table of contents, we've given you all of the templates um, for basically everything that kind of takes you through from step A to them being a client, and then what happens after they become a client, because we want to keep going with that epidemic marketing. Um, and so we've we've directed each one of those steps pretty clearly, I think, um, as to what you need to do, when you need to do it, the timing of everything. Um, we've given you some ideas for like the wow box uh, once they become a client uh, based on some information that you know Tom has helped us with as well. So um, I, I hope that that will make it a little bit more. A lot of these pieces were out there and available to you guys. It's just that they were um, kind of spread amongst a, a couple of different manuals, a few different manuals. And so hopefully this consolidates it all, makes it a little bit um, easier for you to follow step by step. Um, and uh, I guess if you have any additional detailed questions, Always feel free to reach out to our office. We're more than happy to fill in any of the holes if you feel like you, you're you just kind of missing a part. And I know I've done that uh, with a couple of people that have found the manual on their own already. So congrats on that. Um, but again, just a reminder, this is underneath the, and Mike, if you just want to go back one more slide one more time. There you go. Thanks. Um, the getting started, the toolbox, and it is step-by-step -step process from prospect to client. And again, we just call it the communication system. So all of the templates there you can see are on that page, right where you're clicking from. Um, every one of those are hyperlinked directly in there. So it should be very easy for you to find them. Just go ahead and uh, modify them as you need and should be off and running. So feel free to give me a holler if you have any other questions, but I, I hope that makes it a little bit easier for everyone. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, Missy, for taking the time to put all that stuff together. We all appreciate it. Sure. So I have a, an idea for you guys to use today, and um, it's about customer delight. So those things that, that uh, Missy just walked through and, and, and she and Tom worked together to, 
to put that together. Those are things that you absolutely need to do, and, and there should be delight and value in all of those things. But I want to share another idea that you can uh, create a delight with clients. Um, so, oops, I went the wrong direction there. Oh, doggone it. First thing is, the what, Missy mentioned the wow box, but there's a lot more to the wow experience than just the wow box. And it costs about $150 to $2 to make your client's experience or your prospect's experience in your office fantastic. And, and how many of you, anybody on the call here that has implemented the entire wow or wow experience? Anybody? So I'll give you an example of it. One of it is just a little $20 sign you can get at Costco or, or Sam's Club that you put outside your office door that welcomes every client when they come to see you. And guys, I'm telling you, uh, uh, I'm as jaded as any person, but when I go to see my uh, attorney or I go to see um, uh, my builder and they have my name, welcome to, to Mike and Michelle uh, Castleneck, that affects people in a bad way, you think, or a good way. Having a, a menu that you hand people with their and asking what kind of drinks they want, and then the next time remembering without handing them the menu, remembering what they ordered last time and asking if they want the same thing, guess what that does? You know, when you walk into a bar and they know what you want, wow, <laughs> without you saying anything. If you walk into a restaurant and you order the same thing and they remember you and, and they say, hey, you, you know, do you want your, your, your regular or what? I mean, how does that make you feel? So these are things that create uh, un unbelievable experiences. And in today's world, does, do they really think, do people really think that you are smarter than all of your competition or your competition is smarter than all of their competition. Everybody answer that. Do you really think anybody out there thinks one advisor is smarter than another? So I got two no's. Come on, everybody answer that. Three. Come on, everybody. Everybody's answering no, 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 no. So what they're looking for is what? We're in the age of infotainment. They want experiences with their information. And this is a cheap, like I said, a couple hundred bucks, and you're creating an experience that they'll talk to all their friends, neighbors, and relatives about. Make sense? Another way to do that is, guys, um, every time you write a, a stitch of business, you know, a, more than a modicum stitch of business, I send you or Missy sends you a shirt. Now, it does not take, and, and if I just sent you a dollar bill, would that have any, would that have any effect on you whatsoever? But many people still comment to Missy that they love getting these dollars. I'm getting lots of people say, I've, I've kept all of mine. So the thing is, these are easy to make. These are easy to make. And I'll give you an example of this. The, back in 1999 and 2000, when I was making a million dollars a year as an advisor, one of the insurance companies sent a silver dollar that was like enclosed in a little plastic uh, envelope. And I, I'm telling you, every time I wrote a case, I'd ask, if it had been two weeks and I hadn't got my silver dollar yet, I'd ask Missy, where's that silver dollar? Where's that silver dollar? I mean, find out where that went. Why? Why would that affect me? Now, I didn't keep any of those. I gave them to my children. I gave them to my children. So um, th why does these little things affect? Because if they sent me a dollar bill, that would have been nothing. But sending a silver dollar on a plastic uh, uh, sleeve that means that, that that's a thing that they want. Now, there's lots of different folded things that you can get you, or can make. You can make a folded fish, a tree, a tr or a house. <laughs> I guess not a tree. A tree, a house, a heart. What kind of messages could you send if you sent them a, a, a house? What kind of little note could you send to a prospect or client if you sent them a folded house? Any ideas? Get your financial house in order. That's awesome, Tom. Get your financial house in order. And if you send a letter, I'll get your financial house in order with this dollar bill that folded like a, a, a house, how, would they remember who you were if it was a prospect? Would they remember who you were? Or would they just toss that letter out and not even read it? So for a buck, you had major, major impact. How about the tree? What kind of message could you send with the tree? 
I mean, could you send this to all your warm lists, guys? Would it be worth investing a buck fifty, so a dollar, and then the envelope and the stamp, to send this out to your to your warm list? Would that would that be a worthwhile venture? How about the tree? Does money just grow on trees? How about the heart? We'd love to talk to you. These are all easy, simple things to fold. Simple things to do that have what kind of an impact, guys? So if you do a handwritten note in one of these, you know what kind of impact you've had on your warm list? You know what kind of impact you've had on, on a prospect? Little or big? This is a big impact, guys. They will remember who you are. For a buck fifty and what, 30 seconds to write a handwritten note. It's huge. So these are ideas that, that um, uh, are ways to leverage the wow experience for them to remember who you are. When's the last time their advisor did any like, anything like this for them? When's the last time their advisor did anything like this for them? Now, you may not want to fold these, so guess what you can do? Find somebody, it could be a, a, a retired person, it could be a teenager, and you basically pay them a buck per. So it's gonna, you give them a dollar, you give them a bunch of brand new crisp dollar bills, pay them a buck per, so then it's two. Two bucks per folded entity. And they might, they get it down, they can fold, heck, they could fold um, uh, uh, 40 in an hour, they make 40 bucks an hour, it'll cost you 80 bucks to get 40 of these things. Does that make sense? So use these kind of experiential things, the wow uh, system, the things in uh, the manner that Missy talked about, and these kind of things, are, it's not expensive to give people a wow experience. Does that make sense? Uh, four reasons, is Motley Fool, four reasons stock market crash very soon. Valuations are stretched to two decades highs. Guys, are they stretched to two decades highs or are they stretched to almost 100 year highs at this point? Two decade highs or almost 100 year highs at this point? Yeah, way more. Even if it is just uh, uh, two decade highs, what's happened in the last two decades? <laughs> Emotions that are a kettle that could explode at any time. Over the long run, and again, guys, I, I was talking to one of my uh, best friends who's a professor at the University of Minnesota in statistics. So is he a dummy or is he a smart guy? Dummy or smart guy when it comes to math and things like that? Yeah, he's a smart guy. Guess what he was telling me, though? Guess what he was convinced was going to happen in the next 10 years, next year? What does what the population at this point think about the stock market? Do they think it's overvalued? The general population, do they think it's overvalued? Or do they think, wow, this is great. We should put more money in. Because guess what he was doing? He was already counting his eggs before they were hatched. Guess what he was thinking? He was How much money he was going to have next year and the next year and the next year? Half of what he has right now or three times of what he has right now? Yeah, millions. That's what he thought, Mark. Millions. So right now, and was that based on him looking at the market, a statistical, a, a, a PhD in statistics, was that based on him looking at the market and crunching numbers, or what was that based on? This. He was kind of sad after I talked to him and walked through the actual numbers. <laughs> and he had no clue. So again, do we know this could go on for another two years? We don't know. But we're, we're in that room with, with a bunch of old newspaper and a gas can, and it's not going to take much to blow it up. Now, remember we said last week, does it necessarily need to be a bad thing that blows up the market? Remember we talked about it last week? No. It could be something that's good, but not quite as good as it was before. And then we got things like this happening. Remember that GameStop? The GameStop was rallied. By this Keith Gill, he was acting like he was a millennial. He was acting like he was just some um, uh, Reddit guy. What was he, guys? Who was this guy? Anybody know? What credentials did this guy have? He was pretending he was just a little old millennial, had no financial experience, and he was just on Reddit. What did he, yeah, he was a pro. He was a CFA. 
certified financial analysis. Not even a CFP. Guys, where does a CFA sit on as compared to a CFP? Higher or lower on the, yeah, he's at the top. But he was pretending to what? Be, oh, I'm just a millennial, and I'm a, I am mean, don't know anything about these finances, but I'm running, hey, but I got an idea. See, this is the kind of crap that started to happen right now, right? And then we had the coronavirus. Is the coronavirus dead? Hopefully. But what could happen? And what could happen besides the coronavirus? Something else, right? And a significant decline in buybacks. This is a huge one. Significant decline in buybacks is about to become readily apparent. Lastly, uh, uh, um, during the height of the coronavirus, bank stocks and a host of brand name companies announced that they'd be reducing, completely shelving their buyback activity to conserve cash. According to the market analytics firm Giardini, um, the SP 500 companies were paced, on pace to, uh, uh, between 750 and 850 billion in annualized buybacks throughout much of 2018, 2019. As of third quarter 2020, analyzed SP 5 buybacks stood at 407, and it's, so it's halved and it's going down. Share buybacks have played a notable role. Guys, has it, has, have companies really been that much more profitable in 2018, 2019 to warrant the way the market went up? Or where was all of that, the, um, uh, 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 increase in uh, the market coming from buybacks buybacks buy and that's done so we've got all sorts of things that are putting that old newspapers into that brew into that wooden shed in the backyard with a gas can we don't know what's going to make it in flame but we know it's going to and remember we talked about and we showed you the graphs here about two months ago does it matter whether we got out early in the end does it matter whether we get out two years early one year's early or one week early? Does it in the end does it matter? Remember all of the the numbers show that it didn't matter even if you got out two week, years, if you got out in nineteen ninety eight or in or nineteen ninety nine or the week before two thousand, you would have been way better off by getting out. Two thousand five, two thousand six, two thousand seven, I'm sorry, two thousand um uh, 6, 2007, 2008, you would have been just, just as good getting out 2006 before the 2008 crash. So guys, don't wait too long. So today we're going to talk about, uh, in a tape review, we're going to talk about the risk-reward portion of the, uh, 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 the risk-reward portion of the 20-point checklist. And I find that too many guys take shortcuts on this. So the first thing I want to do is walk through the way it should be done. And then I want to show you a tape of how, uh, unfortunately, I see a lot of guys and gals do it. So let's take a look first at how it should be done, okay? So if I get down here, I'm going to bring this up. So we're just going into the risk reward portion. So just two more quick things. Okay. Okay, and then we'll be, you're still doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the next thing we want to talk about is um, risk versus reward. And, you know, what's the really shift of risk to reward? Take more risk, you expect more what? More reward. You take less risk, you expect what? Less reward. Only makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I was in Why do I cover that right up front? Do most people really, they know, they can spew it out, but do they internally know that the only way they get more reward is to risk. My professor friend, did he know that he, intellectually he may knew it, but emotionally did he realize that more reward required more risk? Well, that's right, Ron. Don't ever assume they know. Exactly right. So you got to get them to say that right up front. In an apartment, um, uh, let's say I moved into an apartment building and they offered, you know. Okay, so why am I going to go into the apartment building story, guys? Why am I going to the apartment building story? Does anybody want to admit that they're wrong? But yeah, yeah, Mark, it's free cable. Why do we go into that story prior to talking about their personal situation? Remember, the reason we use these non-related stories, because nobody wants to admit that they're wrong. Nobody wants to say, well, yeah, yeah, I am taking more risk than I'm getting returned. They come up with all sorts of excuses. So we, when we talk about diversification, we talk about, hey, if I had a pie, or we're talking about risk reward, we're going to talk about this cable TV conundrum if you were in an apartment. See, the reason being is that would anybody in their right mind with this story 
say, I should be paying a lot more for cable and getting less channels rather than getting it free and getting more channels? Will anybody in their right mind say that? What percentage of people are going to say, no, I would take free with 100 channels versus paying for 40 channels? What person in their right mind would do that? Zero. That's right. Zero. So by having them say this is the way life works before we get to their current situation, what happens to their ability to make excuses and argue with you? What happens to their ability to make excuses and argue with you? It goes away. So we got to get them – because. With the cable TV story or with the pie with diversification, am I arguing their situation? Am I saying they're idiots? Or are we looking at some other person and we're both sitting on the side and look at that person saying, what's the smart thing to do? And when you do that, well, yeah, when you do the abstract, right, Ron? So when you do the abstract, Dale, guess what? Nobody's going to argue with you. And it becomes very difficult. And once they say that, to argue with you when it comes to their particular situation. Does that make sense? So let's, let's uh, continue here versus reward and you know what's the relationship of risk to reward take more risk you expect more less more reward you take less risk you expect what less reward only makes sense right mm -hmm. yeah so if i was in an apartment um uh let's say i moved into an apartment building and they offered you know as part of the amenities they gave me uh 100 channels of cable tv at no charge so i get how many cat channels 100 at what charge nothing so now cable tv calls me up two weeks later and they say Hey, we've got a great deal for you. We're going to give you 50 channels for $40. What am I going to tell them? I already get 100 for nothing. And do I want to pay more for less? No. No, that'd be what? That'd be silly. <laughs> that'd be silly. So now they've just said that person would be silly. How, are, how hard is it going to be to them to argue that, yeah, that in real life would be silly, but my particular situation, it wouldn't be silly? Becomes a lot more difficult. They wouldn't. And I bring that up because um, we're going to go to Morningstar again and we're going to look at risk reward. So the, this is a chart that shows the risk reward. And the way it works is this. is What does it say down here? Uh, low risk, low reward. And what does it say here? High risk, high reward. Okay. Oh, no, still says what? Uh, high high risk, risk, low reward. Yeah. So this is yes. – okay. So this is talking about risk. So the more I go this direction, the more what I'm taking? Uh, more risk. Okay. Now this one – yeah, when Guys, how much time did I spend just on the x-axis there? Did I just whip through it, or what did I do there? Yeah, you're, I'm building logic, right. That's exactly right. And I don't assume that they get the x-axis. This is the first time they've ever looked at this. I have to make sure they get it. Otherwise, everything else crumbles. Talked about rewards says what? Low? Mm -hmm. And what does it say? High. So as I go this direction, I get higher and higher what? Higher reward, which is their nice way of saying return. Return, and this is over a three-year period. So we want, you know, any year can be kind of one way or the other. But three years does that seem like a reasonable amount to look mm -hmm. at something? Yeah. Okay. Do these look familiar? To you? Why do I get them to? Why do I ask right now? Before I get into their particular situation and their funds, why do I ask do, that? Is three years a, an okay period of time? Why do I do that? Have any of you ever done this? And then at the end, they argue that three years isn't long enough. I've seen it on tapes. Because they didn't get their commitment up front. And then they argue, well, three years, yeah, but what about five years? You know, they, they do that. So I want their commitment up front. Just like when I talk about Morningstar, I want their what? Commitment that Morningstar is valid before they argue or after they argue? Before they argue. So you want to do these things before. It's the, you got to do them in the right order if you want to eliminate arguing. To you. Uh, yep. Those okay, are cool. our investments. Okay. So this box here is the S&P 500. Have you ever heard of it? Oh, yeah. Okay. So what is the S&P 500? It's like the 500 biggest companies, stocks in the United States. Yeah. And could any person with a high school degree basically look at a whole long list of 10,000 stocks that are ranked by size and say, get down to the 500th one, put a line, draw a line there and say, okay, these are the 500 biggest stocks? Yeah. How hard is that? That's easy. It's easy. So guess what it costs you to be in the S&P 500? Very little. In fact, it costs you nothing. There's four different guys. Does being an SP 500 cost you zero? Are there four different ways, four different entities, Schwab, Fidelity, etc., that will allow you to invest in the SP 500 for zero? Yes. Different ways you can invest in the SP 500 and it costs you. Guess how much? Uh, zero. Not little. Guess what? Nothing. Zero. And a CD at zero. You know, at at, at uh, no. How much do they bank charge you for a CD? They 
don't charge anything. No, I don't zero. Yeah. So you got nothing. You know. So if we draw this line as being the S and P five hundred, mm -hmm. and it's saying that you'll take this much risk for this mm -hmm. much what? Return. Okay. And then down here with the CD, you have how much risk? CDs don't have any risk. No risk. Anything. So, but they're, they're also not paying what? They're not paying much. Yeah. Anything. So our bottom here is five point two. Is any CD paying five point two? They're paying um, what? <laughs> one, yeah, one so they're down here, right? Right. So if we're drawing a line from here, all because you take more risk, you get more what? More return. And then we get to here. Does that make sense why this mm -hmm. is, this line is diagonal like that? Yep. The CD is on the paper or way off the paper? It's off the paper. Yeah, but we draw a line to Also, guys, does he get the diagonal line? Am I making sure he gets the diagonal line? Because that's the other thing I see when I, when I hear people doing these. They they rush through the diagonal line because you, the advisor, understands the diagonal line. But Jeff, have you have you had to sometimes explain the diagonal line even to an advisor with 10, 15 years of experience? Oh yeah, absolutely. So if we have to explain it to an advisor, what should we assume about the client, Jeff? That we have to explain it to them as well. <laughs> or better yet, what? Get them to explain it to us. Yes. So guys. This you have to lay down this this knowledge before you get into the moral of the story. Could you take more risk? These are the biggest 500 stocks. Are there smaller stocks than that? Yeah. And do they take more or less risk? More. More. So could you also get buy maybe small stocks? Yeah. Yep. So this is called the benchmark. You ever heard of a benchmark? Yeah. And that's saying like blood pressure. 120 over 80 is benchmark. If I have more than that, I have good blood pressure or bad blood pressure. Bad. So they're using that as the what? Kind of the measuring stick. The measuring stick. So this is the measuring stick. Am I sure they get benchmarked now? See, benchmark is a term we use constantly. Do they get what a benchmark is? Not unless you give them a reference. So we use blood pressure. Most people, Do people understand uh, benchmarks when it gets to blood pressure? Sure. Stick, but you can't just use that. You have to have a measuring stick for when things are what? Uh, bad. Or, or when they're uh, less risk and yeah. less... Less reward. And more risk and more reward. So that's why we draw that line through there. And what does it cost to invest in these things? Um, zero. Zero. So I call it the no cost line. Okay. And I call it the no cost line because it costs what to be in these investments? Uh, zero. Zero. Now, um, these dots are correlated to what? My investments. Your investments. So in this particular case, you're taking this much risk mm -hmm. and you're getting more return. Is that good or bad? That's good. That's actually good, right? Mm -hmm. So anything yeah. above this line is what? Good. Anything below would be what? Bad. Okay, so when we get to this one, you're taking this much risk, and are you getting this much return? No. You're getting how much return? Uh, less. How about this one? A lot less. How about this one? A lot less. How about this one is what? Uh, above. And then this one is what? Below. And this one is what? Below. And this one? Below. And this one? And this one? And this one? So you have a little... A lot above or a little above? Uh, a little above. And you have a lot that are what? A lot below. And remember I talked about there was three fees you're paying? Mm -hmm. There's another fee you're paying, and that's the management fee. Okay. So when we go back and look at your fees, we have 4078 in unnecessary life insurance. And guess what the other difference is? The management fees? Yes. People don't work for free, do they? No. But if they work for us, they darn well better give us some better or worse than we get for free. Well, they've they got to do better than free. Okay, did I admit that people ha have to get paid? Do I want to have an argument about, well, we, well, don't you get paid? So, no, I don't want that argument. So I'm going to say, hey, I get it. I get it. People have to get paid, but what do we expect when pe we pay people? A crappier job or a better job, guys? See, they got to say this. Do it up front so you don't end up having an argument down the road. This is the what line? The no cost line. Which means it costs how much? Uh, zero. So if you're paying for something, do you expect more than you get for free or less than you get for free? I would expect more. If the cable company said, I'm going to give you a worse situation, I'm going to give you half the channels, but I'm charging you 40 bucks for it, what would I tell them? Take a fly yeah, and what? Forget it. For Why did I reflect back to that story again? Why did I respect back to the story? So it reminds them that they agree that what? Anybody who would pay more for less is a complete blithering what? Before I ask them if this is bad or not, 
I'm going to get them to lock themselves into a, a corner where they can't argue with this. Forget it. So you're being charged more or less than you can get for free. I'm getting charged more. A little more or a lot more? A lot more. Yeah. And you're getting what for it? I'm getting a lot less. So you want the best return or the worst return? No, you want the best return. And you want to pay more or you want to pay less? Oh, we want to pay less. You want the higher return, you want to pay less. You got what? Uh, less return for higher fees. Why do you think that's happening? Well, obviously, he's just selling us whatever he gets paid the most on. Right. And so, guys, it, that took how long? So, we started at 47 or at 54. So, it took seven minutes. And would anybody be able, with that, if I did it that way, how many people are going to be able to wiggle out of that? And remember, are we early in the meeting here or are we late in the meeting here? They've already decided this guy is screwing them. So at this point, guess, what you're, uh, guess what's happening? If this was really Jeff's money, do you think Jeff's going to be calm like he is right now? Or what? if you do this right, guess what they're doing at this point? That SOB. Does that make sense? So now let's watch. Uh, let me get out of here. Or let's listen now to an actual tape of a, of, a, of a gal going through this with her client. So get them to say out loud how risk relates to return. More risk, less return, uh, less risk, more return. I'm sorry, did I do that wrong? <laughs> more risk, more return, less risk, less return. Apartment cable story, review the graph mechanics, talk, make sure they understand what a benchmark is, talk about the no cost line, their investment analysis, fees are good. Good uh, if you get something for them, so you're paying more for less or less or for more. Why do you think this happened? That's what we want to go through. So let's take a listen to what happens here. Chair. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is risk reward. Now, again, why do we use Morningstar as opposed to Merrill Lynch or as opposed to Fidelity Research? Because they're unbiased. So I want to look. We, we plotted your... Is that a bad thing to go back and make sure they're still saying Morningstar is unbiased? Is that a bad thing or a good thing? It's a good thing, yeah. It's a good thing. We plotted your portfolio on a what's called a risk reward scatter plot here. Now, um, this line here is going to re represent the S and P. Represent something index. So what is, what's the S&P? Ah. <laughs> so has she described the chart or is she already in the middle of that explanation? Yeah. Can people get confused if she starts in the middle like that? Now we're going to find that the man, he's not confused at all. He picks right up on it. But guess how much we're going to hear from the wife? Does the what? And are, is it okay for only one of the spouses to understand what's going on, guys? Ever? Is it ever okay for just one spouse? No. So she's and unfortunately she's hearing him come right along. So she's assuming everything is good. But let's keep going here. See already that. Uh, so what's the S and P here? So what is our? Um, so this is basically the market. This yeah. is the line that represents the market. Wow. Now, if I were to go down here, if I were to take... How many questions versus how much telling, telling, preaching, and teaching? The TS, uh, telling, selling, is it TS, uh, preaching, and teach, PT, or is it, is it, uh, um, yes. So I'm going to go back it up here a few seconds. Listen to this again. We plotted your portfolio on a what's called a risk reward scatter plot here. Now, um, this line here. Risk reward scatter plot. Do we want to use those terms? What's wrong with saying risk reward scatter plot? Good thing or a bad thing? Jargon. And do people like jargon and things that they don't know? So don't don't use that kind of jargon. Here is going to re represent. The S and P represents something index. So what is what's the S and P? Ah, <laughs> I can see already that. Uh, so what's the S and P here? So what is? 
Okay, so what happened there? So what's the S&P? I can see already that, so what's the S&P? Guys, is she acknowledging what he's saying? Talking over him, right? Don't do that. Is our, um, so this is basically the market. This yeah. is the line that represents. Okay, so whoever said that this view is the market. He sounds like he gets what that is. Do we know if he gets what that is? He, yeah, that's right, Dale. She's got an agenda. And again, this is, I think this is her third uh, 21 point checklist. So she's still kind of more concerned about the script than she is about having a conversation. And that's, guys, that natural. Third time doing. Hey, hey Missy or Jeff, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you just I, fine. I can hear you. Oh, I'm getting a weird um thing there. So let's see. Okay, so the, the uh, um, I lost my track here. Just a second, let me think. Crap, now I, I well now I have to keep going here. I got an error message on my computer. That's why I got uh, ruffled there. So let's keep going and see what she says here. Represents the market. Wow. Now, if I were to go. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So, do we have any clear picture that he knows what the S&P 500? No, he's giving, he's making noises like he gets it, but he doesn't. And for sure, we don't think that we don't even know if the wife gets it or not. So, so this is basically the market. This yeah. is the line that represents the market. Wow. Now, if I were to go down here, if I were to take follow this line down here, I would be getting to that person who sticks all of their. So, did she do any of the story, guys? Do they have any um, um, agreement at this point that you should not pay for things that you don't that, uh, that are inferior to what you're offered? None. So it may work out, but it may not work out. And she, see, I use those third-party stories to guarantee it always works out. Why am I willing to do the pie for the diversification, uh, the um, and the the cable? prior to doing this. I mean, it takes me an extra minute or two. Why do I take that minute or two? Because it guarantees that they don't argue with you down the road. And I'm always willing to do that. Now, this guy, you're going to find out, doesn't argue, but but I always want to do that. All of their money in the hole in the ground. And if I were to follow this line all the way up there, I'd get to the person who blows their entire paycheck at the, at the Seminole crazy. Casino. So, have you been down to Hollywood? Yeah, I, I've been to it. I've you been like to it, it a couple of times. I'm not a big gamp. Really? I'm not. I'm not a huge gamp. <laughs> but which you might be able to tell from my personality. I think it's fun, but it makes me a little bit stressed out. Now, okay. these numbers over here, um, they do you like to gamble? Do you like? Do you like to? What do you no, like to play? <laughs> but I'm very sick because I'm for lack of a better. Do we have any clue whether the wife gets the di you know what that diagonal line is? And has she labeled or had the client label that line as the no cost line that they could get something for free that would mimic that line? Has she got them to say that at all? And that's our whole point of this, right? The whole point is if you can get this here for free and you're getting something inferior and you're paying money for it. So what has she done to her whole argument at this point? Is she going to be able to be effective in that argument? No. Better way of putting it, I'm, I'm cheap. You're cheap. Well, that's okay. That's a perfectly fine way to be. It's okay. fun, but... Uh... Yeah, but I, you know, that's, it's a good way to be. And I like that you... So these numbers down here, they represent <laughs> standard deviation, which is just a fancy way of saying risk. Okay. So um, this block right here is going to be your like a regular vanilla moderate portfolio. So it's following the S&P, it's a vanilla moderate portfolio. So it's taking a moderate amount of risk. Now, if I were to move from here, if I had an investment, these are your investments, by the way. These are all of your investments that are plotted out here. If I were to move from here to here, what would you know about what I was about this investment? Well, it was becoming a little bit more aggressive. It was taking a little bit more risk, and from here to here. So, if, say I was to move from here to here, what would I know about this investment? Same thing, more aggressive. It was Wait taking, yes, yeah, it was taking a lot more risk. 
Yeah. So if I was moving from here to here, it would be taking a lot more risk. Now, what concerns me is this. You'd like to at least meet or beat the S&P. Yeah. 90%. Did he do the work for her there? Did he? What did he say there, guys? Listen again. More risk. Yes. Now, what concerns me is this. You'd mm -hmm. like to at least meet or beat the S&P. Yeah. Guys, would that be the perfect time to empower him? Would that be the best? Steve said yes. I mean, that's then you want to say, wow, man, you nailed it. You get this chart. So he, she's taking all sorts of shortcuts. He gets it. Of course, the wife we talked about doesn't, but he gets it. And if he tells me what I'm looking for, I'm all over it. I'm going to empower him. But instead, she's, again, this is her third time. I was way worse than this my third time, believe me. So she's doing a fantastic job. But we're using this as a teaching moment. Instead of empowering him, she just moves right on to her script. So I'm going to play it back here, and then we'll continue on. This. You'd like to at least meet or beat the S&P. Yeah. 90% of your investments, 90% of your investments are to the right of this, which means... Who's saying that he's got bad investments? Oh, John asked a great question. Do you have to force the inclusion of the wife? So everybody on the call answer that. Should, should you or should you not force the inclusion of the wife? Yes, because remember, who 90% of the time is going to make the decision about this? Who's going to make the decision about leaving their advisor? The guy or the gal? 90% of the time. She is. So she's got to be on board. Guys, can you explain the way that I did it? Could a, a, a wife walk understand what I was doing? The way I did it in the video, could a wife understand that? Yeah. In fact, the wives are usually also the checkbook paying the bills for a lot of a lot of times. And if they don't do, if they're not doing the bills, they don't do anything else. Guess what they're doing? They're shopping. So when they're shopping, do they get you should pay less for less or more for more, uh, or do they get that you should uh, pay more for less and and instead or or if you can on um, getting something on sale and pay less for more? Do they get the whole concept of the apartment? Do you have to be an investment expert to get the risk reward the way that I lay it out? No. So yes, the wife has to be involved. So we'll keep going here. 90% of your investments are doing what? They're failing. They're taking on a lot of risk. Not so she did say it and he and then asked an open-ended question. That was awesome. She asked an open-ended question, even though she said it, she asked an open-ended question, it's, but it's dangerous to say it first because then they're going to want to argue. In this case, he didn't. She asked it. He got it. Of course, like we said, the wife doesn't, but he got it. 90% of your investments are taking on a lot of risk. But, however, do we mind taking risk? If we're going to get a good room, what do we want in, in exchange for well, risk? But even so, that's a big, that's a big time frame, and it's, it's pretty clear that in, in, the, in the past, uh, how far back does it go? This is a three-year. So I'm not, I'm not, well, but he Does he sound like he's going to, again, make another point for us? This is a big time frame. Yeah, it does. But instead, she gets what? So listen again. He's making our going to make our point for us, but instead, listen what she does instead. That's a big, that's a big time frame. And it's, it's pretty clear that in, in, the, in the past, uh, how far back does it go? This is a three-year. So I'm not, I'm not. Cherry well, but even three years, I would expect it to be closer to the S&P 500, yeah. much closer. So Did you make a point for us? Yes, so we should empower him again. But again, just we, we, we plow into the script. So because so, here, uh, three years is a long time. Ninety percent of them are to the right, which means they're doing what? So it sounded like he, she did what? Not only did she not empower him, what did it sound like she did with his point there? Ignored it, discounted it. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So here we go. Taking on more risk. Yeah, but they're, and they're also below our. You see again, she overtalked him. So listen again. 
time? Ninety percent of them are to the right, which means they're doing what? Taking on more risk. Yeah. But they're and they're also below our line here. So they're all ninety percent are also below, which means are we getting more reward or are we getting less reward? Much less reward. So ninety percent are to the right, which means we're taking on more risk. Because if I, just, if I just kept totally, if I kept had a hundred percent index, it would at least be doing much better. It would be doing, it would be doing much better as according to this. So I'm not, and and this is a no, three year again another opportunity to do what guys? What was the opportunity? Is he making our whole point for us? Empower. That's right. Empower. 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 Instead, she's gonna be defensive again. We don't want to do that. Bring this. So I'm not. And, and this is a no, three-year. That's year. a good point. I just thought I was. Um, but this is very informative in yeah. lightning chart. So I'm not cherry picking, you know, because <laughs> you could see this. You could see this at a snapshot of, of any day with anybody's investments. But this is a three-year scatter plot. So. So does she sound like she's being defensive here, guys? He's making the points for her, and instead of empowering, she's still back to Louisa. And again, this isn't a, this is not a snapshot. I mean, this is three years. He already made that point for her, so she wasn't listening. Again, she's doing way better than I would my third time. <laughs> but but this is a learning experience. This shows you that you want to listen, and when they make the point for you, empower them. Don't don't get defensive about it. Empower them. Then I'm going to play it. We got two minutes left here. I'm going to play it all the way through. Oh. My question is, has anyone, first, you know, and I've said this a couple times now, but has anyone gone over this with you? Has anyone ever looked at your investments in relation to your other investments, maybe with a different, with a different house? And if they had, would you maybe have done things a little bit different? No. Well, I mean, well, yes, yes. But, but, to, answer, but to answer your original question, no, I haven't really talked to anybody about it. Okay. So no one's ever called you up and said, you know, let's look at the amount of risk you're taking in relation to how much reward or how much return no, you're getting. The burden is on is on me. The I burden. Have not, I haven't really uh, well until recently. Okay. I mean, well, is it fair? I guess it's fair is the wrong word, but if the burden's on you, I mean, are they making money from you? Well, of course. They're making money from you. So. Is it reasonable to expect that at least a portion of the burden should be on them? In theory. In theory, <laughs> we when we pay people money, what do we want them to do for us? <laughs> do we? What's what's fair? At least what, work for us somehow. At least directly work for us. Directly. At least work for us somehow, directly or indirectly. <laughs> so. What do we want to see? I mean, I'm not asking for specifics, but but what do we want to see a little bit more? Well, in a nutshell, I would like to be closer to the S and P. I like, like to be a little bit closer to to balanced, like balanced. To, to taking risk and actually getting rewarded for it. And the last thing that I want to talk about. So she's done, guys. What did she end with? What is her emphasis on this? What is her emphasis on this? The returns. That's right. So she's going to say, so we want to be closer to this line. Could that, could that guy and gal, could that couple go back to their current advisor and say, listen, I want to be above this line. Could their advisor then pull up a morning start for three years and then reallocate all their funds to things that are above that line? Is the purpose of this, because she unfortunately missed the whole point, was the purpose of this to show that um, they've never been shown this, and now that they know it, they want to move all their funds above that line. Is that the purpose? No, that's right, Ron. What is the purpose? To get their, her to say what? My advisor purposely withheld this information to what? Make more money. So instead of giving me a higher return with less risk, and charging me less fees, they're charging me more fees to give me less returns with more risk. Did she also, did she make that little design? Remember when I do um, uh, return and fees, that little, um, that little box where I say returns, you want higher or lower return? I want higher return. Instead, you got what? Lower return. For fees, you want higher fees or lower fees? I want lower fees. Instead, you have what? Higher fees. So instead, of, did, did she do that little 
thing at the end where you had to have the person encapsulate in their minds, holy crap, I want higher fee or higher returns with less fees. Instead, I got less returns for higher fees. And what's the reason he did that? So he could put more money into his pocket. Because remember, did she get, after all this, so she spent uh, about seven minutes too, did she get what she needed from this script? Everybody answer that. Did she get what she needed from this script? Yeah, not really. Because did, did the client, did we end this with the, that the advisor is doing this to make more money? Giving them poor results with the whole purpose of making more money. Did we get that? No. Remember, guys, can the other advisor change their investments? We just talked about, yeah, he can go back to Morningstar and say, I want things that are above this. What's the only thing the advisor cannot fix? What's the only thing the advisor cannot fix? Trust. That's right. Trust. And if you do it the way that I lay it out, if you do it this way, how many people are going to decide that they they cannot trust their advisor? And remember, we're at this point, it should be pretty darn simple because we're already well in. We've had we've made a laid out a case that their guy is taking advantage of them. At this point, guess how hard it's going to get them to get pissed off when they get to why do you think this happened? It's going to be hard, or they're going to be all over this. But the only reason the guy's doing it is to take advantage of me. Does that make sense? Coolio. So, does it, so did, did you like me going through taking this at one and showing this, the video of the right way to do it before I show you an example of a, somebody in the field? Does that help? Good, because I usually don't do that. Oh, go, we're getting lots of yes. Perfect. Well, I'll start do laying it out. Once, the, once a month that we do this and do a tape review, I'll do the video first as a better comparison. Um, I'm glad that you've said that because I haven't been doing it that way, so we'll we'll switch that way. So thanks, guys, for being on the call today. I appreciate all of you. And again, this gal, third time in, like I said, she did way better than I would a third time in, but we always can make ourselves better a little bit at a time. Make sense? You guys have a fantastic rest of the weekend. We'll talk to you all next Monday. Thanks, everybody.